I might have brewed the juiciest and the strongest coffee yet. It's not at all like your standard. In fact, I would like to compare it to almost like a long espresso because the ratio I'll be using today is a one to eight. But because the beans absorb about 15 to 20%, we're only extracting about a one to six ratio, which is comparative to a long espresso. But it is done as a pour over. Is it the glass of gods? No. But is it good? It's really damn good. So let me show you guys my new method. It's a bit of a switch up. It uses this. As you might have seen from the thumbnail, I took a switch and I replaced the glass piece with the Mugen dripper. Now, fun fact, I've actually been saying the word Mugen wrong the whole time. I've been calling it the Mugen. Somebody in my last video actually commented and told me that he's Japanese and that I've been saying it wrong the whole time and that it should be pronounced Mugen. Now, it's a fun, funny thing because I'm actually a big fan of the anime Samurai Champloo, but it never occurred to me that the main character, Mugen, actually has the same name as this. When he said that it's like the word infinity, I just knew exactly what he's talking about because I remember it was like in a ramen shop and then like... Mugen was like raised on the countryside. He doesn't really like know any language. And then somebody was making fun of him for it. And then he kind of came up with this like stroke. And that was how he, uh, I, th I think that's how it goes. But I think that's how he got his name, Mugen. Um, but yeah, if you guys haven't watched Samurai Champloo, uh, you should really do so. It's actually a really good anime. And it's a, it's a pretty good classic. So yeah, watch that. So at the end of 2022, I came up with this new method where I would start with a bit of water at the bottom and then I would have the coffee grounds in that's floating on top of the water and then I would use the pour. Now the pour itself was to be kind of softened. The impact would be softened by the water at the bottom. And at the same time, because we have the water at the bottom, the coffee grounds like to start from a higher point and it becomes more like a flat bottom in the sense that there's more surface area on top and less depth, which means we can kind of get all the grounds wet in a much shorter amount of time. And in that video, I did a normal 1 to 15 kind of standard. But because we are able to hit, to get all the grinds wet quicker, we're able to extract much faster. So we needed to change the way we brewed to match that kind of speed or strength that we were able to achieve with this dripper. Now, the reason I had switched out to this one is, well, somebody first suggested it in the last video, um, but at the same time, I was also noticing when we were using the glass dripper, so if you poured the water in, like regardless, and then you had your switch up, um, the water pressure would force some of the water through the paper filter, and you would see that the water is just sitting outside of the grooves, like between the grooves and the water and then the paper filter. And what happens is when you brew, because there's already water tension underneath the paper filter, um, if you were to brew the coffee and the coffee was getting extracted, the coffee, the extracted coffee does not get to go outside and kind of mix with the un with the unsaturated water. So when you open the switch, what happens is a lot of just this clear water or very, very light brown colored I don't know if you could call it coffee, would come out first. And that essentially means we have an under-extracted portion to the coffee, and I thought that that wasn't very good. So I had swapped out for something like the Mugen, and it just makes a lot of sense to me because now we don't have that under-extracted piece of water um, that's coming out the beginning. So this means we can actually have a very, very strong coffee because the Mugen also has a smaller hole than the standard V60, which means... We let the volume and the height have a slower flow rate, which causes more extraction. Now, when I was doing the 1 to 15, I would notice that I was extracting really, really slowly towards the end. It was clogging, but obviously because this thing has no grooves, the water has to go through the middle. And the coffee was tasting pretty good. But I felt like if I, if I, if I could switch the cup, which I did because I have a stand... Um, halfway through, I tasted the part at the end and it was just boring. So if it was boring and unnecessary, 
Why is it there? Why couldn't we just brew a stronger coffee where it's fully extracted, all the good flavors are extracted in the short amount of time, and then if we wanted to add or dilute it, we can just add water to create more clarity instead of having these unnecessary flavors. And that is why we have a very, very small and short ratio when we brew with the Mugen Dripper with the switch device. Now to brew a strong coffee, we have to understand how we pour to kind of match because we actually have a, a, a flatter surface and a wider surface. Um, we want to be able to pour in a way that causes more agitation, especially because the water at the bottom is going to act like a small little buffer. It's going to help soften the impact. So what I suggest is uh, what I've been doing is I've actually been pouring, but slowly, but from a higher height. Now, the reason why we want to pour slower is because we want to be able to use the small amount of water we have to brew all the coffees. We have to hit all the grounds with the least amount of water possible. That way we can have the strongest and fullest extraction without fully, without over extracting at all. I, that was kind of, it's a lot of words, but if you yeah, I think it makes sense. Um, so what we've done is, what I've done is I've actually decided to use boiling water as well to maximize the extraction. Remember, the higher the water temperature, the faster we're going to be, I guess, damaging the grinds enough for it to sink. Um, so when we pour, I like to pour from a high and slow um, spot and then use a higher water temperature. We're going to hit all the grounds as quickly as possible and then... We're going to stir for two seconds, open the, open the shaft. As it drains, we're going to stir for another three seconds. And then once it just kind of drains and fully extracts, we're going to have probably one of the juiciest, but one of the strongest coffees I've ever brewed with a pour over device. Now that I'm done the overview, um, I'm going to give you guys the recipe. It's going to be a one to eight ratio in total. We're going to start with 20 grams of beans. And then we're going to put one part inside of this, so 20 grams of water before we add the 20 grams of beans. And then we've only got the 140 grams of water um, to brew with. Now the grind size is still my medium fine, which is about the 350 microns. But the finer you can go, the better you, you get with it, I guess. Um, I actually think with this technique, you could probably brew almost espresso level kind of strength. But in a pour over, it, 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 in my head, it should be doable. Um, give me a couple days to kind of work on this. Maybe next week's video or in the subsequent videos, I will be sharing it. But I think if you use um, a super fine, like almost like espresso grind level and then use the 100 degree water, um, you're able to agitate it quick enough that you can pull the shot or pull the drink out with only um, 100 grams of water used in total um, because... Espresso is normally a one to two or one to three ratio. Um, it would be a long espresso, um, but I do think it is very doable. Um, so maybe we'll try pulling espresso, but on a pour over device. But yeah, no, enough about that. Um, if you guys are new here, my name is Vincent and I'm an experimental and educational kind of coffee guy. Um, so if you guys want to follow along the journey, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification so you can get the latest updates on my newest techniques. But let's get right into doing a demonstration. I'm so excited to show you guys the new Mugen Switch kind of hybrid brewing technique.
So now that the brew is done, <clears throat> now that the brew is done, let's just quickly took, take a look at the grinds. Um, if you guys want to take a look, it actually, let me zoom in a little. We've got the granulars in the middle, um, not, and then the, the sides are pasty, there's not a lot on the sides. I think overall this is a pretty good brew. Let's go over to the other side and um, just do a quick um, conclusion to everything. So I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of idea with the whole Mugen and Switch hybrid. Um, I actually think being able to brew a very small cup of coffee is quite beneficial. Um, sometimes we do want to have that really strong coffee. Though this is actually one of the sweetest coffees I have ever had. Um, probably because there is less water. I mean, you notice the acidity a little bit more, but because of how long it took to actually brew this coffee, you get a very full extraction and you get a very large array of flavors. Now, obviously, if you find it a little bit too strong for you, I do think that this is a very strong coffee. So what I would suggest is you actually add water directly to this um, and you can add it kind of like to your taste preferences. It's kind of like how um, people have been doing it in the AeroPress competitions recently. Um, they brew a very strong coffee and they add a bit of water to kind of hit their preferred um, dilution rate or flavor profile. Um, I personally like to take, when I really want to drink coffee, I just want those like one to two sips. It's kind of like how I, I have these cravings for like a beer or a can of Coke or something like that, but I only want one or two sips. And um, for me, these coffees have actually been satisfying that crave really well. When I really want a coffee, I really just want to taste it for that quick moment. Um, espresso is too strong for me. Espresso with water. Sometimes I think um, if there's too much water, it, you don't really taste the espresso. But this hybrid method really brings out a lot of great flavors that I think the espresso doesn't have. Also, because it uses a paper filter, we get more clarity, which brings out a different kind of level of complexity that the um, espresso with water or like an Americano wouldn't have. So I actually think this is worth quite the, the, the while to try out. I do understand that not everybody has a Mugen and at the same time, not everybody has, you know, the ability to kind of just swap it out like I do. Um, that being said, you could try this on the switch. I, on the, on the normal glass stripper, um, I actually have a lot of success with it as well. I mean, it brings more clarity just because you have that water in the beginning. What I did think you could try is um, if you do want to do it, you can brew it with like the one to eight again, or one to nine maybe, or one to 8.5, whatever. Um, but essentially you could, if you had it on a stand and if you were fast enough, you could technically switch out the, the not so tasty water into a different cup um, and you'll still get the same kind of effect. Um, with the Mugen, obviously you're gonna have a more restricted flow rate which gives you a, a stronger flavor and a higher extraction in a, in a shorter amount of time. So um, I do think that this technique is very interesting. Um, give it a try, let me know how you guys like it. Um, yeah, please, it, it's been really fun to experiment with a lot of ideas. Um, I hope it all makes sense to you guys. And if you guys like this, make sure to like it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching, bye.